I'm Janara Nirenberg. I am a journalist, and I'm here with Kathy Pearl, who is head of conversation design outreach at Google. Thanks for being with us, Kathy. And um, first, can you just tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into AI and conversation design and what you're up to at Google now? I've been working in some form of conversation design or another uh, since the late 90s, uh, back when I worked on IVRs, phone systems, those ones where you call and talk to the computer instead of a human. Um, so I've been doing conversation design in different formats, uh, phones, uh, multimedia, iPad apps, and now at Google we mainly work on the Google Assistant um, where you can interact uh, by voice or by typing to the Assistant. Great. And so tell me a little bit about your path and what it's been like um, as a woman and you studied computer science to begin with and um, before Google you were at Sensely. Um, maybe you can just walk us through some of the experiences or insights that you've gained along the way. Sure. Um, I got interested in computers when I was very young, and my dad, who loved gadgets, bought a uh, Commodore VIC-20 when I was eight years old for Christmas. And I was the person in the family who was very interested in learning how to program it. And from a young age, with movies like Knight Rider and War Games, I was really fascinated by the idea of getting a computer to talk back to me. So I used to write programs uh, like little mini chatbots uh, when, when I was a kid. But I had no idea that someday that could be an actual career. Um, and in fact, it wasn't until maybe um, graduate school when I was studying computer science and I took a class in human-computer interaction, HCI, where it's kind of this mind-blowing idea that when we design, we should design, don't just design something cool or useful and have people sort of figure out or read a manual on how to use it, but design for how people sort of already work. And that fits in great with a voice user interface because we all know how to talk. And so if we could build an interface to the computer where people could just speak naturally, that would be a great way to do it. So after that, um, I moved back to California, and I got a job with a company called Nuance, um, who works on phone systems that you can speak to. And um, I learned a whole lot about how to create these conversational interactions. And now we're in this new phase of smart speakers where we're using voice in a very different way, um, but in many really helpful, useful ways uh, that are different than just keeping someone away from a, a human agent. So it's a very exciting time to be in this space. Right, and so, um, and then tell us a little bit about what you were doing at Sensely. So Sensely uh, has a, it's a company that has a virtual nurse avatar. Uh, mainly for patients with chronic health conditions, for example, congestive heart failure. And one of the things uh, that I worked on while I was there was um, a, an interaction for folks with congestive heart failure. So these people might need a little extra health monitoring, um, but of course we don't have enough medical staff, enough nurses and doctors to call or visit someone to check in on them. So these patients would have a conversation every morning with Molly, the virtual nurse avatar, who would ask them, did you take your medication? How are you feeling? Help them take their blood pressure and their weight. And then take that information and, and send an update to their nurse. So for example, if they had a rapid weight gain, which for congestive heart failure patients can be a sign that something's uh, maybe not quite right, the nurse would know that this person needed help and could call and, and do an intervention. Um, and it was great to see conversation design used in this very direct way to help specific groups of people with something that was affecting their daily life. Right, and so like, what's it been like to go from kind of, you know, a startup with a very niche area of focus to a large company like Google, um, where you're doing a lot of outreach and sort of like broader industry education? Um, tell us about that transition and also what your day-to-day -day is like in your new role. There are definitely a lot of differences between the startup world. I've been at startups for about seven years before I came to Google. Um, at a startup, one of the great things is that you wear a lot of hats. And so when I was at Sensely, I got to do a huge range of things, whether it was um, designing conversations that the avatar would have, uh, writing uh, code for what people could say back to the avatar, doing data analysis, as well as speaking directly to um, patients and also um, our clients like hospitals and, and clinicians and things like that to understand their requirements and their needs. Um, but at a startup, you don't have a lot of as many resources as a, as a big company at Google. So at Google, 
people are put into more perhaps a specialized role. So there's one person or one group writing what the assistant might say, and there's a different group who's working on what the, the user could say back. Um, so you sort of get to touch fewer parts of the end-to-end the -end process. But you also get to be very specialized in one particular area. And one of the things I'm really enjoying about my role is I'm back with a big group of designers again, mm -hmm. which I hadn't had since I was at Nuance. Um, some of them are, are colleagues I, I worked with, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And it's great to be in a big group like that um, and work on a, a lot of variety of projects and things like that. And how do you, you know, define conversation design? If somebody just, you know, approaches you at a conference like this and is like, well, what is conversation right. design? What is the essence of it and what are its core applications? How do you tend to answer that? Usually I start with, you know, have you ever had a frustrating experience with something uh, like Google Assistant or Siri or something like that? And most people have. And I say, well, our job is to make those experiences better. Um, and our, our philosophy is that we are teaching computers how to communicate like humans and not the other way around. So our whole goal is to leverage the way that we already naturally interact when we have a conversation and put that into the product so that you can just walk up to it and speak in a way that you would do in a natural way and get the things you want. Obviously the technology is, is far from perfect and so we're trying to apply good conversational principles to the existing technology to build these, these great experiences. And so um, we talked um, earlier a little about bias and, and that kind of thing and um, obviously that's a huge concern with, with AI. Um, so how do you see that uh, factoring into conversation design? So I think it factors in a few different ways. Part of it, of course, is the, the speech recognition technology itself, which in the mm -hmm. very, very early days, you know, was built by some men in a lab, and that's whose voices it worked best for. Over the years, we, not we Google, but we, the, the industry, have, have gotten data from a much wider variety of, of speakers. And so um, we are, it, it is getting more, um, a more diverse set of, of speech and so the recognition is improving for people across the board. That being said, it's not perfect. There are certainly certain um, speakers who uh, you know, we need to I improve with, um, but over time uh, you know, we hope to, to make it work for everybody, whether, whatever your uh, background is, whatever your accent is, whatever your speech patterns are, we want to be able to allow everyone to take advantage of this technology. Excellent. And, um, you know, part of your role is doing outreach and sort of broader education and collaborating with, with different folks, I assume. And um, so can you tell me more about um, the outreach that you do in your role, but also what do you think is perhaps needed in the field of AI and particularly for, for women and making it more um, friendly? Yeah, um, so as part of my role on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I might be speaking with people inside Google. Um, I speak to a lot of groups across the company about ways they might want to apply voice user interfaces or, or conversation design to whatever product they're working on. And then if they do, let them know that part of the process is to make sure you're thinking about conversation design and building that into your process. And then I go out in the world and, and do that as well and speak at conferences and, and things like that. Um, in terms of, um, can you say the second question again? Oh, just, um, just um, making conversation design uh, within AI mm -hmm. um, more friendly for, for women to enter that space. Yeah, it's, it's one of those chicken and egg problems because one of the things that I really appreciate about conversation design, and this has been throughout my career, is that there are a lot of women in it. It's, it's, and I've been, my first job out of college, I was an engineer at a software company and um, I was one of 30, I was the only woman in a group of 30 engineers. And so it's really refreshing to be in a field where there's a lot more uh, female representation. And I think it's that thing where you just, you have to have those other voices in the room to point things out. Um, one example is people often talk about how should assistants handle abuse. So if the if a, if a user is uh, swearing at it and or making you know innuendos and things like that, what's the right thing to do? And it's something that not everyone maybe would think about, but women certainly uh, think about it. Uh, and so we want to make sure we have um, a good strategy to deal with that, like shut the user down, you know, don't, don't engage, don't reward that behavior. Um, and we have to put 
thoughtfulness into figuring that out because it's not a simple a simple problem. Right. There's some great questions to think about, and uh, just want to thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me.